So today's a great day because I get to admit that I was wrong about something. I'll admit that when I first unboxed today's product, that I was very skeptical about the performance that we were going to receive from this thing. And this is a 556 suppressor from Wit Machine. This is the Mod 1 suppressor. And let me show you where my brain was at when I first got it out. Mod 1 suppressor. What I am used to seeing when it comes to centerfire rifle suppression. <laughs> There's a big difference there. This is a little tiny guy. And really, when it comes to the can, what we're really talking about is this section forward because the rest of that is just a mount. So again, little tiny suppressor was not expecting as good a performance as we got. So what I think we ought to do is dive into the specifics of what they've got going on with this thing, and then I'll take you guys to the range and show you the testing that I did on it. The machine made a big splash in the market with their SME compensators some time ago. And since then, they have continued to push the envelope on these and the NFA side of the house. The goal of the Mod 1 was to produce a compact, low blowback suppressor that won't crush your wallet. This is the 5.56 version, but a 30 cal variant is available as well. The device is built around a 416 stainless monocore backbone that threads into the body of the can at the proximal end. Rewind back to the last time I had something here from Whip Machine. They sent me some suppressors to test uh, earlier in the year, I think, and I said, hey, guys, I can smell the red Loctite on this. I can smell the red Loctite. And red Loctite is to never be used on a suppressor. I know rock set's expensive. Well, they listened. The only problem with that is that they listened and slathered it with rock set before they sent it to me, so then I had to melt the rock set to be able to take it apart to take pictures for you guys. Damn it. Damn it. In tandem with the 556 can right now, we have one of their 45 cans in, and I'm convinced that this is actually a gag that they're pulling on me based on my 45 caliber cans suck video that I did a few weeks ago. They deny it even though they absolutely did fill that thing with a rock set as well and didn't have any wrench flats on it for me to take it apart. Anyway, on to the goods. This device incorporates what is emerging as industry standard thread patterning at the back of the stack. Meaning that although the device ships with a beautiful Reardon manufacturing atlas mount, you can swap it out to something like the dead air system should you choose. To complete this synopsis, the can is finished in high heat black Cerakote and is covered in wrench flats all over so you can actually take it apart. First up from the range, the absolute audio test and this is going to be 5.56 out of a 16 inch barrel versus the Mod 1. While that reduction is fairly impressive, it's a real game changer when we talk about something like 5.7. So what would be can testing without some accuracy testing? And for anybody who's new here, when it, we use the term accuracy in relation to cans, we have to be a little bit squishy with that definition. There's really two things that we're looking for. The first thing is a perishable point of impact shift, which in my definition of that is the gun shoots center without the can on, and then you put the can on and it almost misses the target. If we see a perishable point of impact shift, today we will go ahead and shout it out to you. And we have two mounting profiles today. We have both the dead air mount and the factory mount from Whip Machine. The other thing that we're talking about as far as accuracy is concerned is the group size. Because a lot of times, these devices act as the best target crown that you can possibly get on your gun. To accomplish all of that testing in one go, I like to use one bore down from the stated caliber. Given that this is a 5.56 can, that means we're using 17 WSM today, and any excuse that I get to use to use my F17X, I'm gonna take. All right, first up, unsuppressed, shooting this at 
50 yards, no rear bag. Unsuppressed group, and I didn't bring the caliper with me today, so we're gonna do that back at the shop. We're gonna use the dead air mount first because, well, that flash out is rock set it on the end of that thing, so it's gonna be a bear to get it off without some supplemental means. Okay. You can see just a little bit of leftward deviation, but this is not what I would consider concerning. And this, boys and girls, is how you break your gun. We'll do this. Oh, yeah. That'll do, pig. All right, this guy right here, we're not keeping that because that was the first shot with the big glare. And I'm actually out of ammunition, so unfortunately we can't do any more. So for the record, I would not classify that as appreciable point of impact shift. I'd say that both mounts are fine. You might get a sunshade for your scope though and actually get somebody who can shoot. Yeah, sounds fine. One of the things that I like to do is ride to the front of the property when I'm done with a rifle. Now, given this is private property, so just throwing that out there, but particularly for me, the problem is the groundhogs. They like to burrow in the berms, loose dirt, things like that, and then it rains, the berm washes out, and having done it, it's like 10 grand to fix a berm. Well, I will say that a 17 WSM round is much cheaper. Even though it's not very cheap ammunition, it is much cheaper. But the thing I wanted to show you guys is that there is plenty of room with this particular can, with that 16-inch barrel full-length AR, to get in and out of the window without a whole lot of problem. Given that it is both bored for it and user serviceable, we have to try 22, right? Of course we do. <laughs> Here's the thing about 22. A couple considerations with it. The reason we want user serviceable 22 cans is 22 ammunition is some of the filthiest stuff out there. And in some cases, the priming compound is considered corrosive. And Okay. Oh yeah. <laughs> I have no idea where the zero is on this gun. You can hear the crack on that. Okay. Supers. Got a little bit carried away there. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah, you couldn't really tell the difference between the suppressed and uh, empty chamber there, could you? <laughs> Y'all remember this guy, right? This is the Rifle Speed Gas Control. We have a full video out on this. I published it a few weeks ago. I have it linked below and all the other relevant places for those of you who are interested. But this is one of those mods that has come out recently and is just a godsend as far as the adjustable gas block world is concerned. And again, you can find more information on it in the dedicated video. What we're going to use it for today is a highly visual aid. You can see right here what gas sitting we're on. And basically we're gonna use this to test what the gas load looks like going from unsuppressed to suppressed using this can. So I don't remember what this thing was set on 
the last time I used it and what can was on it and all that sort of stuff. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna just set it on five here and I'm gonna take a step back and see how the gun is gassed. Let's see what it takes to get it to gas perfectly with this thing on. Okay, we're looking three o'clock-ish. So if we just give it one down, so we're gonna knock it down from position five to position four. Let's see what happens. Right back to where it was. So I wanna say that gas load on this can, even though it is a tightly bored can, because it is um, so small as far as cans are concerned, it's not given a whole lot of backblast to the point where it's really overgassing the gun. And of course, the last thing that I wanted to check was how it does at night. If you want more information on what I'm running for my night vision setup, then I'll have some videos linked in the description box down below. And of course, there are discount codes over at the affiliates page for these helmets if you're interested. And we'll do a little bit closer. This is, again, I don't know what all you guys can see here and what you can't. And, you know, that's not half bad. So as far as a final synopsis on the Mod 1 suppressor, I think that they hit all the points that they were looking to hit with this thing. You know, it's short, compact, it's not overly heavy, it uh, performs relatively well as far as a 5.56 can is concerned. It doesn't gash you really hard in the face, it doesn't do a lot of port pop or anything like that. And it's just a super efficient design. Now, if I was looking to suggest some continuous improvements, I will say that having switched back and forth between a couple different mounts, that the tube being completely round makes it a little bit difficult to disassemble. However, I also really like the fact that it doesn't have flats at the tip because it just look as, it looks aesthetically pleasing to me to not have big wrench flats at the tip of the thing. That's a personal preference type thing. To be honest, as far as rifle suppressors are concerned, you don't actually need to take your rifle suppressors apart. I think the last estimate that I heard was about 180,000 rounds before you need to absolutely take apart a rifle suppressor and clean it. If you're shooting 180,000 rounds, you might call Whip Machine and see if they'll give you a deal on perhaps just getting a new core on that sucker. Now, if we were going for performance enhancement, I would say going for some kind of thing like what they did on their canuter valve that has some geometry here at the end to help dissipate some of that flash signature, particularly at in the night scenario. While it's not bad, I feel like perhaps something like this may help push that thing to the next level to prevent any of that extra burnout from, from occurring. I'm really grasping for things to balance this review because I don't just want it to be all cupcakes, rainbows, and butterflies, and all that sort of stuff, uh, because I don't think that that does service to anybody to just say all the good things and none of the bad things. The main take home that I would say is whenever we're talking about a gas gun, particularly what we call the direct impingement, even though there's a lot of people that argue about direct impingement or whether the AR-15 is actually a piston gun, whatever, the gas comes back close to your face. Okay, and that can be loud. If you've got a suppressor on the end of it, sometimes it'll increase that dwell time to the point where that can be very loud, to the point where the suppressor is doing such a good job at capturing everything that comes out the end that it is overshadowed by the fact that you've got this really loud thing right next to your face. And if the suppressor is 
well regulated inside, like this particular device, then it keeps that to a minimum and it balances what comes out of the end versus what comes out of the ejection port that is right next to your ear. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that you found this in video interesting and informative. And if you did, please sign off in the comment section down below. And if you feel so inclined, then you can support the channel at our Patreon. Subscribe to our pages as well as the affiliates page. has got all kinds of deals, crap like that for you. And if you guys are interested in that Patreon subscribe star thing, then you can see a list of people on screen right now that are doing that very thing and clearly have no problem with being on the domestic tourist watch list.